We are, of course, also uh, advising banks to uh, have a look at a climate risk. I mean, climate risk is also something that is extremely important that uh, banks have a, a more strong focus upon. So there are, of course, structural issues that has to be dealt with. And the uh, link between the uh, states and the banks, I mean, we are very well aware of that. And uh, that was, I mean, one of the main reasons for um, starting and building the banking union. So that is also something that we try to also advise the politicians in Europe that we have to also establish the third leg in the banking union to make sure that we have uh, the union and can reap all the benefits of having a single market for both banks and for uh, European and inhabitants. That would be actually my next question, because um, a lot of people are arguing that we really need banking consolidation. And then if you speak to the banking CEOs, they say we need first uh, to have a complete banking union, because otherwise it, it's just not really attractive to have cross-border mergers. So is that also your assessment or is that just an excuse from the industry? I mean, this is part of the story that there is a need to have a, a European deposit insurance scheme in place. So I think that is something that we are trying to advocate everywhere. But I mean, consolidation can be done in different uh, uh, parts. So I mean, uh, we would like to see more consolidation also inside countries. I mean, we can see in many of our countries that there, there are probably too many banks. And uh, we have tried, I mean, we we cannot push consolidation as supervisors, but we can try to facilitate and make sure that uh, our uh, rules and regulations and supervision is well understood in the banking sector. And uh, last year we published a guideline on banking consolidation, and this is also a topic that we uh, continue to discuss with uh, the European banks. Shishten, it's Karen jumping into the conversation. I want to ask you about climate change because the ECB has already begun looking at the vulnerabilities in the financial system over exposures to climate risk and effectively will conduct these uh, stress tests around climate change. At what point do we get to where banks are going to be forced to hold more capital to offset those risks so that they may have on their balance sheet? We have a plan for our work on, on climate risk. We have issued our supervisory expectations on banks, and we have asked banks to make a self-assessment, which we are scrutinizing for the moment. In this year's, in 2021 year's supervisory uh, uh, evaluation process and the process where we decide upon the capital for banks, this will be a, a concrete discussion. We will not add a capital uh, requirements on banks on for what counts to the cl climate risk, but we will be able to, uh, I mean, uh, put um, qualitative measures on banks. For the next year, it will be, uh, we will be on site, there will be, uh, I mean, deeper discussions with banks, and at the same time, we will also make a, a new stress test with a focus on climate risk. So I would say next year would be the year when we will be able to also request more capital if banks are not ready to identify and measure and assess their climate risks. ECB has been one of the fast movers in this area, but that said, it's still been pointed out that some of the banks are not quickly winding down uh, their offerings to those in the fossil fuel industry. When new projects are had, you're still seeing financing come to the fore from the banking system. Does that worry you that you're not seeing a stronger approach from some of the European banks to stop lending to this heavy polluting part of the, the industry? I mean, we can see from the self-assessments that there is quite a lot more to do for banks when it comes to climate risk. So this is one of our priorities and we will continue the discussions with banks and we will, I mean, challenge them in all the different areas. This is, of course, a very difficult issue and it's a difficult risk for banks to manage because it's new, it's hard to get data, it's hard to measure in different ways, but just because it is difficult, you should not avoid it. You have to take uh, major steps here, I would say, to make sure that you can um, really understand the climate risk you have in your balance sheet.